Ladies and gentlemen, the Shred Gaming Telecom video. Sony are not happy bunnies. They've actually quadrupled their forecasted loss for the financial year. Now, they're blaming their smartphone division and has described it as, and I quote, the impairment of goodwill in the mobile communications segment. Or, to translate it another way, if you prefer, this impairment, so to speak, has cost them 180 billion yen, which is about 1.04 billion British pounds. So back in July of this year, the company were expected to be making a loss of about 50 billion yen for the financial year. Now, that's no longer the case. It's going to be about 230 billion yen, or 1.3 billion Great British pounds. So this means that it's going to be making an operational loss of 40 billion yen rather than making 140 billion yen in profit. So, before we go any further, I believe I can summarize the rest of the video by saying ouchy wouchy. But to be slightly more technical, the PlayStation 4 is doing well. Um, it's selling well, it's making Sony a reasonable amount of cash. But unfortunately, uh, Kaz Hirai, this is actually the second downward revision that has happened under his watch. Now, it's actually quite funny because I just bought a Sony smartphone, <laughs> which is irony, but um, Reuters have actually suggest, uh, suggested that the Xperia, which is, of course, one of the uh, brands that Sony manufacture for smartphones, is suffering, particularly in the United States, because the only carrier that's actually... Um, got the phones on offer are T-Mobile and as far as I'm aware they're like the fourth largest carrier. So Sony's answer to this is to actually focus on its premium lineup and reduce the number of mid-range phones. I guess their theory here is that less mid-range clutter could certainly help and possibly reduce their manufacturing costs but I don't necessarily know if it's going to solve the issue because the bottom line is if you can only get things through one carrier as particularly if, you know, service sucks in your particular area, or you just plain don't like their offer, then you won't go with T-Mobile. So you're basically limiting the amount of customers. So the bigger question, however, and I'm sure the one that most of you are more concerned about, is how does that affect you if you've just bought a PlayStation 4? Well, I've already seen some comments of Sony are going bye-bye and all of that. I, it's not a good situation. Um, you know that Sony, just a while back, actually sold some of their property. And of course, they can't keep doing that. They can't, they, they've they basically got no more property to sell. And they've been trying to, well, get rid of, if you will, a lot of their liabilities. And they've had quite a few. Um, obviously, they've got the smartphone issue. They've had the computer division and so on and so on. But it's not just a case of, oh, okay, well, we want to sell this and done. To sell something, particularly if it's making an operational loss, it can actually still, in the short term, cost you quite a bit of cash. Um, it's not that I actually particularly blame Kaz himself either. Uh, at the moment, the mobile market in particular is very volatile. In the United Kingdom, we actually have a chain where it's called Phones For You. Um, and it's actually, uh, it's kind of going into administration at the moment. Basically, phones for you offer loads of different smartphones and uh, services and so on um, at kind of discounted prices. So, for example, you'll have stuff uh, in the UK, at least we've got carriers such as like, for example, Free and Vodafone and so on. And theoretically, phones for you is supposed to act as kind of like uh, getting you a really good deal. But what was happening in effect is that just wasn't occurring. Um, and sometimes their deals were considerably worse just because the mobile market now is becoming really, really competitive. Particularly when you see Samsung and Apple and all of these guys that are really just pretty much being brutal. I mean, it, it's not a good situation in the smartphone market now, and I don't really envy those who are the smaller players, to be totally honest. It, it, it's going to be quite, it's quite difficult. Even Microsoft are struggling and you know how much cash they've got, and they're even struggling to enter the market, and that's one of the reasons, one of the theories, that they actually bought Minecraft, and I don't exactly, we, no one knows exactly how that's going to play out, but one theory is they could become maybe preloaded on certain smartphones, on, on certain Windows smartphones, or it's going to be like Minecraft 2 is exclusive to Windows-based uh, architecture, who the heck knows. 
Regards to the Sony situation, however, some theories are already predicting that it's it's not going to be good for the PlayStation 4 uh, because the PS4's finances at the end of the day are really helping to contribute now to the bottom line of the of the company. Um, so there is some concern that this will naturally affect the PlayStation division in terms of how much money they can actually spend on research and development, particularly on the next generation console. Um, and I don't mean the PS4 here, I mean the PS5, because we all know that R&D on the next generation console is probably already starting, or at least the research, the basic research, they might not necessarily have said, okay, here are the specs, but they're probably already performing an architectural analysis and pretty much doing a post-mortem of the system saying, okay, here's where we went wrong, here's where we went right, what can we do for the next generation, what are the developers going to want, and let's face it, the next console is not going to be released until, let's say, four to five years' time. The PS4 has been out for almost a year, it's coming up to like the year mark, it's about nine months-ish, nine, ten months, um, I can't actually remember the exact date, November-ish, I think, yeah. So, it's going to be... It's going to be a while before the next console's released, but of course there are concerns of what's going to, what, what's that going to mean for Sony-funded games in the future, by which we mean first-party titles, first-party exclusives, and so on. It's certainly going to hurt Sony's bottom line. The bottom line is they, the other bottom line is they can't keep taking these losses. No company can constantly operate on a massive financial loss. It's just. It's it's just impossible, and obviously the confidence of the investors themselves it, it's going to take a hit. Does that mean that if you're on the fence and you're wondering between should I buy an Xbox One or the PlayStation Four, does that mean you shouldn't buy one? Well, I I don't feel that the PlayStation Four is going to have a short shelf life. I don't think we're going to see you know for sale up on the PlayStation Four division within the next couple of months. But certainly over the next couple of years, Sony really need to, in my opinion, change their strategies and so on. Because certain things are, are being very brutal and we're seeing huge corporations going under. Um, and it's, it's, it's not a particularly good... It's not, a good uh, it's not a good position for anyone involved. I actually feel somewhat sorry for Sony because they're doing everything right in their computer division... And the you know the well the PlayStation 4 division, the PS4, the PS3 have got a lot of profitability. And the funny, ironic thing is, some of this, some of their losses, um, and some of their costs definitely stem from the PS3's development. When of course they entered into the the, the PlayStation 3 cell process was extremely expensive to develop for, and it, of course it wasn't just them who were helping to develop the system, but even so. It cost them a hell of a lot of money, and it was also very difficult to program for, so in a way, it actually kind of turned out to be bad. We could probably perform some type of analysis on the chances of Sony going under, and I'm sure there are already large corporations um, by which we're talking, the likes of Reuters and those who focus on Wall Street and the happenings of Wall Street. They're probably giving odds now of what's going to happen to Sony, what the future is going to be. And I'm sure there are murmurings inside the Sony Corporation in regards to Kaz Hirai's future at Sony. But two years, which is how long he roughly he's been there, it's not that long when you're trying to basically change the direction of Sony. It's not like Sony's... It's not like Sony were doing amazingly and then Kaz took over and then it turned to crap. Sony's been somewhat sinking and yes, I know that he did say out loud that look I'm going to be changing the company's fortunes unfortunately it just the way that the tech industry is going at the moment he's basically fighting against the tide so yes the PlayStation division is doing well so I don't feel that they're going to be trying to get rid of that anytime soon because it's one of their divisions that maintains a strength and a really good brand and a lot of goodwill for consumers but they also do need to get rid of these large anchors that are definitely weighing them down and pulling them into the depths of uh, despair. Anyway guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.